Welcome back guys to the Python Made Easy series. Today's class is all about the OS and the OS.path modules. This is about accessing and manipulating the operating system, files, and directories. We'll go over a wide variety of methods and functionality, and as always, we'll have plenty of examples to get you going. Let's jump in. So what is the OS and the OS.path modules? The Python OS module is from the Python Standard Library, and it provides a portable way of accessing and using operating system dependent functionalities. The OS.path module is also from the Standard Library, and it's used to manipulate file and directory paths and path names. Let's take a look at some of the more prominent things we can do with the OS module. We'll take OS module on this slide, and then we'll do OS path on the next. For the OS module, we can get the name of the operating system, get the current working directory, we can change directories, we can get or set user and group information or values, we can test for access to a path and see if a file or directory exists, so we can return a list of entities in a directory, we can create a directory, we can remove or rename files or directories, we can get stats for a file, like its size or the date it was created. We could recursively generate files and directory names, and we can kill a process. There's much more that we can do, but these are some of the more prominent things. And what are the things we can do with OS.path? Again, partial list. We can return the directory name. We could split directory or file from its path. We can also split the file from its extension. We can determine if a path exists. We can determine when the directory was last accessed or modified. We can also return its birth date, when it was created. We can get the size of a directory. We can determine if an object is a file or a directory. We can join path and file names together. We can normalize a path's case. We can determine if two files are indeed the same. And over the next two slides, we'll go over the usage of some of these methods in the OS module itself. So the first one here, and you see we have a slew of imports that we're going to use as well throughout the course of the next several slides for both OS and OS.path. So here we have the OS.name method, and this simply returns the name of the operating system, right? Name of the operating system, OS.name, and I blank it out because I don't want, I trust you guys, but who knows whose hands some of these things could get into. So some of the more sensitive information, I, I blanked it out, but you would see the, the OS name there. So now we have OS environ and the home. So it's here that it would get my home directory on my computer. So here is the current working directory, os.getcwd. And always got to give that with the open and close quotes. It is a method. Here we have the os.getgid. So what's the group ID of the user? os.getlogin. What is the login name of the user? Terminal size. So this is the actual size of the terminal in columns and lines. And here, os.access, my file, do I have the rights to access the file? And I put it in an if else block. The if print statement says you have access and else has, says you, you don't have access. And it comes back, thank goodness that I have access. How would I create all these presentations? And we continue here with the OS module. So this one up at top is an os.lister, and we use it with a generator. So os.path.join, my dir, and file name. So directory and file name for file name in os.lister, my directory. So you see what it prints out for the given directory. Three paths, including the file names. And we print that out using a for loop. Then I have a try except block. This is a really good usage of this. If I'm going to use the os.makeDir, and I don't want to continue to comment this out, I can say os.makeDir in the try branch, newdir, accept, and then print this directory already exists, moving on, if the directory already exists. Next, number three, I have here a generator of objects. Again, fn for fn and sorted. I'm going to sort an os.lister, directory one, reverse it true, and I'm able to then print new objects listing list objects. So I list them out in a list and you see them. It's just a partial list there, but you see all my files print out indeed in the list from the highest in the alphabet to the lowest. So reverse sort order. Then for number four, I get the size using what's known as the os.stat against directory one. I create the object object.info against os.stat against directory one. And then I can use some of the attributes of that os.stat method. I use object.info.stat 
size or st underscore size and that gives me 736 against my directory and that's in bytes then i could get birth time what's known as birth time and i actually convert that that's one of the reasons why i imported the time module so time dot c time at object underscore info dot st dot birth time again is an attribute of that os dot stat and you see it prints out friday february 8 and then military time and that's because if I didn't do that, it would print out in seconds and it wouldn't be very useful. And finally here, I can also use the object underscore info, that object that I created against os.stat for st underscore device. And that's simply the device that the file resides in. I'd like to point out here too, that with the os.lister number one, I printed that out in a for loop but I could have very easily just done x equals os.lister my directory and just printed out what x was. All right, and for the rest of the presentation, we'll go into os.path. So what do we have here first? Absolute, when I print the os.path, that abs path, the absolute path, that means it's going to print out with the forward slash. If you're on a Unix based system like I am, I'm, I'm on a Mac. So it'll print out with a forward slash, just like you see it here, users slash users slash my test slash testing one. Number two, we have the os.path.base name. This prints the second part of the path. So if I have users, my tests, testing one, so users my test is the path and testing one is that subdirectory so it's going to split right there between the two as you see right here so it prints the second part of the path so base name will give me just testing one then for number three we're using the os.path.split minder so splits the first from the second part so just like we were talking about it's going to split the users my test from testing one separated by a comma and here we use the dot dir name method to get the directory name of where a given directory lives. That one we just did on a directory. Now we can also do the same on a file. So the first one gives us the path to the directory. The second one gives us the path to the file. So the particular file, my file, lives in users underscore my test, testing one, testing two. Then for number seven, we can test for existence. So does the path exist for my dir? It does. We'll do the same on a file. Does it exist? It does. And here we can use the get a time and get a time checks the last time the file was accessed. And we convert that using datetime.datetime.utc from timestamp so that it's human readable because if not, it will show up in seconds. So that's what we did here. And here we continue with os.path and what it can do for us. So the first one here is picking up on what we did on the previous slide, which was the last time we accessed a file. Now it's the last time we modify the file using the get m time instead of the get a time. Then we can get the size of a directory, os.path.get size. We can do the same with a file using the os.path get size. Then we can determine if a path is absolute. Remember, absolute says it has to begin with that leading slash. And on the first one here for number four, it's true. On the second one, there is no leading slash, so it comes back false. Number six determines if it's a file. And the first one is true, it is a file. OS.path is file number two, comes back false, it's not a file. The third one, I created a totally fake file, and also it fails. I just wanted to test to see if Python's lying to us, and indeed they're not. In Python, we trust. And finally, the, the last one I ask, is it a file? Is it a directory? Is dir? And I pass it a file, and of course it comes back false. So we are good to go with these. And we'll finish up with os.path on this slide here. The first two are ones we've seen before. We're testing for os.path.isdir. The first one is true. It starts with a forward slash. The second one is false. There is no forward slash. And for it to be believed as a directory, there has to be a forward slash. Then, and again, those are on Unix-based systems, not Windows. Then um, we'll look at joins, os.path.join. So it's going to join a forward slash representing a path to a list of strings, foo, bar, who, ha. And I do a for loop here for x in 
my paths to join i join os dot path my paths the forward slash to x which is each element of my list and you see how it comes out here foo bar hoo ha all with the path in front of it are we the same for number four we can compare files are they the same element object and in this particular case for number four it's true i created one file from the other file 22 equals hello hiya foo.txt so it's a path to a file then for number five i use the split text method and what does that do split text is kind of neat it's going to split the full file path including the file from that files extension as you see here and then we'll finish up with getting the current directory which tells us users slash my tests and then we can change directory to new dir new dir sits inside of that previous directory when we do that now we have users slash my underscore test new dir so we're able to change the directory from within python or through within python interactive if we were there having come to the end of the presentation some of you may say but where is os.walk where are those examples where are you going to teach us about that ah my fine friend great question and great segue in class number 37 which follows this one i have nearly 30 minutes of content on the very important os.walk so go right over there and take a look and leave any comments or questions that you have okay python family thank you for watching till the end if this class has helped you, consider helping me to continue to bring these classes to you and others. Helping is easy. Just do the following. First, subscribe to the Yogi Coder YouTube channel. Next, like this video and leave whatever comments and questions you'd like. Finally, share this video on any and all social media channels with your friends and your colleagues. And as always, this presentation and its associated code will be stored up on GitHub on the link that you can find in the section below. That's it for now, folks. See you in the next one.